In the last video, I showed you how to sign up for Kaizena. Right after you sign up, you will see this Groups Listing page. Now, you typically create a group for each of your classes, but first, let's take a look at the sample group. Now, the first thing you'll see when you open up the sample group is this tutorial. I'm going to demo the same topics as the tutorial covers, but you can feel free to go through it yourself later. Okay, so on the left sidebar, you will see the names of sample students. Clicking on one of the sample students will open a conversation with that student. Conversations are the most important concept in Kaizena. You have a private conversation with each of your students. If you have 25 students, you will have 25 conversations on this left sidebar. So let's open up a conversation with Lewis Lerner. So conversations contain both student work and your feedback on the student's work since the beginning of the term. So students upload their work to the conversation and you add your feedback to the conversation. This lets you see a history of your student's work and your feedback all in one place and lets you and your students see progress over time. In the top right corner, you'll also see a file history uh, of just the files in this conversation for quick access. So let's open up the most recent file from Lewis Lerner and add some new feedback. Now, there are four types of feedback that you can provide with Kaizena. There are voice comments, text comments, lessons, and skills. Let's start with voice comments. So I'm going to start by commenting on uh, Lewis's first sentence here with a voice comment. So after I allow the permissions, I can begin. Hey Lewis, this is certainly a descriptive hook that may appeal to a certain uh, scientific audience, but you could really make your writing more appealing for a wider audience by incorporating some details about why this is such an important discovery. So when you've stopped recording, the voice comment is automatically added to the conversation. Now, most teachers love voice comments because we can all speak up to 75% faster than we can type, which means giving more feedback in less time. But there's also a 30-year body of research that shows that students have an overwhelming preference for verbal feedback. Of course, uh, some things are just easier to type, and so you can always add a uh, text comment. So I'll just make a highlight, uh, choose the text comment, and say, uh, uh, can you indent this uh, some more? Great. Uh, so that's voice comments and text comments. Next up is lessons. Lessons let you reuse your feedback uh, for common mistakes and link to other resources on the internet. It's a way for you to stop repeating yourself. So before we can use lessons, however, we need to add some lessons to our lessons library, which you can find by clicking on the menu icon in the top left corner and then lessons. So for many subjects, we have curated lessons that will automatically show up here in your lessons library. Uh, but for now, I'll show you how to add a new lesson. As we click the Add New Lesson button, and then I'm going to give it a name. So let's do a lesson on paragraph transitions. Now you can add a voice comment, a text comment, or a link to a lesson. Now, while most teachers begin by reusing their own voice comments and, and text comments to save them to a lesson, linking to other websites and in particular videos is the most powerful way to use lessons. So that's what I'm going to show you right now. So let's go over to YouTube and find a video on paragraph transitions. So 
So let's choose this one. So I will copy this link and then choose the link option in the lesson and paste it. And so now we have a video lesson on paragraph transitions that we can use when reviewing student work. So let's go back to Lewis Lerner's essay uh, to start using this lesson. So I'm going to click on the menu icon, groups, I'm going to go back to the sample group and back to Lewis Lerner and then I'm going to open up his essay. So uh, this was the paragraph transition that I'm going to comment on. So if I make a highlight and then click down here on the lessons button, which is the light bulb icon, and start typing paragraph transitions. As I type, we'll automatically suggest uh, items from your lessons library. So I just need to hit enter and then add lesson. And now that video is embedded directly in the conversation. And this is important because in general, the shorter the distance between what I have to learn and why I have to learn it, you know, the more motivated I am to actually learn it. Okay, so that's lessons. Uh, the fourth and final feedback feature in Kaizena is skills, which is represented by the rocket ship icon down here. Just like with lessons, before I can start using skills, I need to add some skills to my skills library, which again I will do by going up here to the menu icon and then to skills. And then I'm going to add a new skill and call it conclusion. Okay, so with that, I'm going to go back to Lewis Learner in my groups, sample group, Lewis Learner, and open up his essay. And I'm going to track uh, his conclusion. and give it a rating. So this might be looking familiar at this point, and that's because skills are really just a quick way to track evidence of rubric criteria that students demonstrate in their work. We call it skills because it makes sense to students and many teachers in schools and districts and states and provinces, depending on where you are in the world, have a different name for uh, what is effectively tracking learning objectives or learning outcomes. Okay. And that's it. Um, once you're finished reviewing a student's essay, you can click Close File in the top left corner, which will bring you back to the main conversation. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to create your own groups and invite your own students.